And my third prototype, this is a depiction of my third prototype. This is a quarter scale. This was about roughly six feet high, composed of 90 small three-quarter inch wide range tweeters. And these are, these tweeters actually are really in fact wide range because in their normal application they can be used down to something like the order of 500 hertz, which is quite low for a, a, a tweeter that only has a half inch diameter dome. And this one, this particular one had two and a half inch drivers. So this one, if I'm not mistaken, it had something on the order of 36 inch and a half drivers and 90 small drivers. Now I've, on the side of this array, and of course this was on the ground plane, I mean it just simply stood up here. And so in effect, when you set this up in a, say in a domestic environment, this is six feet tall, but with its acoustic reflection, and you can think about this array being underneath the ground, you have two of these things. You've got one up here, you know, and one down there. So it's in effect 12 feet high. I mean, that it would be very high to, I mean, it would be very hard in a domestic environment, a living room, to put that size of an array. But with this thing, you can. Uh, I have a, shown on the side here the, the shading that is in banks. This is, again, the ground, the floor, whatever you want to call it. I mean, this could be the, the floor, it could be the wall, it could be the ceiling if you wanted to hang it upside down. But this shows that roughly a third of the transducers are on at zero dB, roughly from here to here. And uh, approximately another, uh, somewhat less than a third, is down approximately three dB from here to here. And as you see, it goes there. So there's, <coughs> there's actually one, one, two, three, four, five banks with zero minus three minus six, nine, and 12. And you can see the banks get shorter as you go up towards the top of the array with the minus six dB, minus nine, and minus 12. So one consideration that the ProSound guys have when you're applying this shading is, well, you're throwing power away. In, 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 indeed, you are. But when you calculate the amount of power that you've thrown away, it ends up being about two and a half dB. But the trade-off is considerable. By that I mean what you gain by throwing some of this power away is extremely uniform polars. In this case, you end up with an extremely uniform vertical polar that's, you know, that's essentially good all the way from the floor all the way up. Now, one array that you can directly compare this with is a straight line array. I mean, typically you can think of a, an array of these same number of speakers in a straight line that goes from, say, ground level all the way up. And typically they're always, these arrays are typically, do not include shading. They're on all, all on at the same level. And if you compare the polars that you get from the straight line array with them all on equally versus this curved arc CBT array with the shading, there is an extreme difference. The, the straight line array has, as you go up in frequency, has numerous lobes that you know, exist that are shooting in different directions and it, the whole pattern changes as you go up in frequency and it gets extremely narrow at the highest frequencies. Now this, this particular, these, the CBT arrays have a defined vertical coverage that extends, say in this case, if I'm not, this was a 30 degree arc, and it has a, a vertical beam width of about 22 degrees. The beam width refers to the, the level where the, I'm, refers to the level where it drops down six dB, and essentially it's zero dB on the floor, and then as you go up, in this case, it's about 22 degrees where it's six dB down. Now let me, let me digress for a second here and pick up something that uh, I need to emphasize from the military papers. Through mathematical proof, etc., they determined that the, the so-called shading on the surface of the sphere was essentially equal to the far field pressure distribution. And the, what the claim that they made was that the shading on the surface of the sphere 
was essentially equal to the far field, saying that again. So, in effect, this doesn't have a near field. The near field usually is defined for acoustic radiators where you have a, when you get up close to the radiator, you have a complicated sound distribution. It settles down the farther away you get from it. Now, these particular surface arrays, the spherical cap array, does not exhibit that because the the far field pressure distribution is essentially equal to the near field pressure distribution, and hence it doesn't have a near field. By that I mean it, 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 it in effect, it, it, you have the same pattern here going around it this way as you do out here. Now it ends up that the line array version of this thing exhibits the same situation. Now typically if you measure the so-called polar pattern of a loudspeaker. You position a microphone a certain distance away and then you rotate the speaker around. You know, at a fixed, or of course you can have a fixed loudspeaker location and then rotate the microphone around. That works as well. And then you plot the frequency response at different directions or the, the level of change at a specific frequency. Now it ends up on these arrays that if you, if you can arrange it so that you can measure this polar at the center of curvature of this circular arc, which in this case is about a point down about right here, and then swing this around like that, it has the same polar pattern. If you move the mic up, say, within just a few inches of the array, in other words, you're, you're rotating this thing around this way, as long as you do that, the polar pattern you end up would be the same whether you do it just you know, a foot or two in front of the array, a fraction of a meter, or if you go way far away. So that's very handy because you can actually get a usable pattern measurement up close to these arrays. Now, I'd also like to give an editorial comment. What you're hearing now is uh, a YouTube video which we have prepared describing this CBT technology. And uh, what you're listening to is essentially completely unrehearsed. I'm just speaking right off the top of my head. No teleprompters here. And I know you might be saying, what's this crazy guy doing? I can tell he hasn't rehearsed this thing. Well, that's too bad. You get what you get here. So, <laughs> uh, Now that I've described the, the ground plane version of this, the freestanding version, there were a number of other prototypes that were constructed one of which this is an example of that was actually just constructed earlier this year. Uh, this array we have dubbed the CBT-36 because this has a 36 degree circular arc. It's a ground plane CBT. And this one is composed of 18 two and a half inch drivers. These are two and a half inch high excursion drivers. And, and there are four of these wide range tweeter elements per two and a half inch driver, so that makes a total of 72, 18 times four. And these, it ends up that the polar pattern of these arrays is maintained up to the frequency roughly where the spacing is somewhere in the range of a half to one wavelength, the center to center spacing. So that's why these, these are actually small one half inch inverted dome, uh, hard metal, aluminum, uh, wide range drivers. And there are 72 of them and they're spaced approximately at uh, eight, eight tenths of an inch, 20 millimeters, something on that order. So this theoretically has a point at which that as you get up to a certain frequency, the polar pattern goes chaotic and essentially it doesn't control it anymore. And that frequency for this particular spacing is up in the range of 12 to 15 kilohertz.